All right. I understand that you're uh, testifying as a damages expert and wear two hats, talking both about Mr. Depp's damages and about uh, Ms. Hurd's purported damages. Um, let's talk about Mrs. Her Ms. Hurd's damages first. You understand that you have to testify as to damages that resulted from the Waldman statements, correct? That was my analysis. Most of your testimony, however, was just simply testimony about things that occurred after the Waldman statements. That's what I was tasked with, yes. Right. The, the, mere fact that, the mere fact that there were activities after the Waldman statements doesn't establish that the Waldman statements caused any damages, does it? When you look at the time frame of when the Waldman statements came out and you look at what was going on with Ms. Hurd's career prior to the statements and what happened after the statements, it's very clear to make that correlation that they were caused by those statements and the campaign that followed afterwards in terms of the negative social media. Well, all right, that's an interesting thing because the witness this morning uh, actually described the, the, uh, the notion of what's correlation and what's causation. And, Correlation does not imply causation, does it, ma'am? I'm not an expert in semantics. Okay. But you're an expert who is purporting to say that uh, Ms. Heard lost between 45 and $50 million. And I'm trying to understand where you put the link between the Waldman statements and all the other activity that occurred since them. As I stated and very clearly wanted to make sure that, that everybody understood was that it was a time frame under, you know, between which the Waldman statements were made and the negative decline in her career started happening and, and in discussions with her agents and her publicists, there was a very tight timeline and a very close link to when those statements came out and when everything started pulling away from Ms. Hurd. Right. But the what you're talking about is, a, is just a link in time. You, you do not put any causal connection between what Mr. Waldman purportedly said and the damages that, that Ms. Heard purportedly suffered. You have no idea whether Mr. Waldman's statements uh, caused any damage to Ms. Heard, do you? Well, actually, both the words in the statements were used as hashtags in the campaign, as well as when the statistical and the investigative analysis was done on the social media campaign, it turned out that one in four of the statements were, had Waldman or Waldminion in them. So that was another connection that I was able to make between the defamatory statements and the negative negativity that the studios and the product endorsements and the television and the press connected as well. All right, let's start with first principles. If they're true, they're not defamatory, correct? Again, that's outside of the scope of my uh, okay. expertise. All right, let's then go back to what you just testified to. And I think you said the Waldman statements appeared in hashtags. I said words from the Waldman statements appeared in hashtags. Right. And the hashtags that were analyzed, however, don't have the Waldman statements in the hashtag. I've also seen them online myself. Well, but the, the analysis that Mr. Uh, Schnell did, he looked at four of them, right? That was Schnell's analysis, and I do believe I remember reading that, yes. All right. And the 25% that you just raised, that's Mr. Schnell's analysis. You didn't do that. He did it. Correct. All right. So you know what Mr. Schnell did. And he didn't look at hashtags that contained the Waldman statement words. He looked at justice for Johnny Depp, right? That's one of them, yes? One of them. Of the 1.2 million hits that, we, that you talked about, that was... 900,000? 984,000? Well, also in my conversations with Mr. Schnell, we talked about all the words that were in the statement that also appeared. So what he wrote in his report and what I had in my conversation may not have been the same right, thing. Ma'am, I don't want to hear about your conversation with Mr. Schnell. Uh, it's part of what I relied on, and I'm okay. allowed to talk about that. All right. So your conversation 
uh, with Mr. Schnell, let's move beyond that and let's talk about what the other hashtags were. Amber Heard is an abuser. That's not in the Waldman statement, is it? The fact that she was called a hoax can be related to Amber Heard as an abuser, but no, those words were not used, correct? Right. And we don't, we just don't like Amber. That's not in the Waldman statement. Correct. And Amber Turd is not in the Waldman statement. Correct. Right. None of those things are. And in terms of the use of the words fraud and hoax, that appeared in only 6.5% of the uh, millions of, of uh, tweets that Mr. Schnell analyzed, right? I don't have his definition or his report in front of me, but we can look at it together if you'd like to. Right. And, uh, and you said Waldman appears in 25%. Waldman or Waldminion. According to Mr. Schnell, yes. No, all right. But you st if, if that's your only evidence, however, that any of this activity has any link to Mr. Waldman. Is that correct? Well, no, we also look at the timeline because those those campaigns were not active prior to the Waldman statements and then they started appearing, so there is some connectivity there as well. Mr. Depp bears no responsibility for for the social media campaigns. He doesn't if the social media campaigns caused Ms. Heard to lose her ability to generate income. That's not the Waldman statement. Gonna, That's a social media campaign. I'm going to object, Your Honor. May we approach? Okay. All right, so I'm, I'm just looking for all evidence of the causal connection that you claim exists between the $45 million in damages that you assert and the three statements made by, made by Mr. Waldman. Well, you also wanted, I also looked at Ms. Hurd's career after the divorce proceedings and other lawsuits that she was either involved with or was discussed. And her career might have had a pause, but she was able to overcome that when she did Aquaman and she did The Stand, both very prominent productions. And there was no dramatic downturn in her career after uh, any publicity. Ma'am, I don't mean to interrupt you, but do you have notes with you? No, I, there's dust. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. It's just dust, and I'm just distracting myself. I guess, you know, I'm sorry. I, it's just I, I nerves, knew, I, nerves. It's really just that. I just, I, yeah, there's no, just that's okay. dust. Sorry. So, so you looked at her career, but and you looked at the way her career was moving. Right. So as I was saying, her career was moving forward, and even she had been able to overcome the negative publicity surrounding the divorce or the initial filing of the UK lawsuit and the other lawsuits, anything that she was associated, she overcame that. Uh, she did Justice League and she did Aquaman and she did The Stand and she got the L'Oreal contract all after that. The only time her career slowed down and stopped was at the same time that those def defamatory statements came out. So, But there was a lot of other activity that happened following the defamatory statements. You said every time Mr. Depp files a lawsuit, 
it ignites the fire around the both of them. Right? No, I actually said it, it ignites the fire mostly around Mr. Depp. That was no, in well, con that was excuse me, please. I'm sorry. That was in context of when I was asked about Mr. Depp's career. That was not in context of when I was asked about Ms. Hurd's career. It's not the same fire? It is and isn't. Who's the, the protagonist in the case in the UK was Mr. Depp. Ms. Hurd was a witness to that case. She was not a part of the case. So but most of were, the negative press went. There was enormous amounts of negative activity around Ms. Hurd as a result of the UK case. Isn't that true? There was negativity, yes, about it. Remember, both of them in the case, yes. You're right. It, substantial amounts of negativity. Right. Right? And so you can't tell me that that negativity isn't the thing that keeps your or, or misheard from working. Well, again, it was a close time frame. The negative statements were a much closer time frame to the press and publicity around Aquaman and the stand than the UK case, which was months later. So again, I will look at the, the defamatory statements as kind of the igniting force, and it was promoted and, and kind of more oxygen was uh, put on the fire when the UK case came out. So it kind of became a snowball effect of, of you know, the match was lit and it kept getting stronger and stronger. Right, but, you, but Ms. Hurd isn't claiming a causal connection between the UK case and her damages, right? No. All right. And you can't distinguish between the UK bad publicity and the bad publicity that derived after the Waldman statement. What time frame are you talking about with the bad publicity from the UK case so we can at least be specific on time frames? Well, you talked about a five-year time window. A five-year time window from 2020 to the two years that we're at now, plus the three years moving forward, is what I talked about in terms of the time frame that it would take someone who's been under this much duress to kind of rehabilitate their career. That's when we talked about the five years. Right, that's when you talked about the five years. So you look over this five-year window, and during the period that precedes this window, there's lots and lots of negative press about Ms. Heard, irrespective of the Waldman statements, correct? Before the Waldman statements, as I said, she was able to overcome that and she got great jobs and was getting endorsement contracts. Right, but after the Waldman statements, there is more activity in the press, there's more social media activity, and you cannot put a causal connection between that activity and what Mr. Waldman said. It can be the instigating event, if you want me to call it that, we'll call the Waldman statements the instigating event of a torrential rain of social media tactics that went on, has gone on for years, yeah. The instigating event, and, and therefore, you, your damage analysis with a degree, some degree, I guess, of reasonable certainty is that once there's an insti instigating event, um, everything that happens thereafter is fair game for damages? Well, it's like a fire. If one tree burns and then more air or wind is added to it, then the next tree burns and the whole forest burns. But if that first fire hadn't started with the one tree, there would have been no loss of acreage. So you can look at it with that same analogy. Bur trees burn one at a time, don't they, ma'am? You know, I'm not a firefighter. I'm not going to go there with you. But mm -hmm. obviously, know. we know that a single match can cause thousands of acres to right. burn. So I, we can leave it at that. I, I think I went there with you. All right, let's do this. Um, you decided that there were a number of persons that you described as comparable in order to determine what your what Ms. Hurd uh, was likely to make over time, correct? Yes. All right. Of those comparable actors and actresses, is there a single one who has had any press suggesting that they defecated in the marital bed? I don't know. <laughs> I have okay. no idea. 
you would agree with me that that is a negative influence with respect to Hollywood. If one believed it, yes. Yeah, if one believed it, you know it was reported. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it certainly has been discussed. We don't have any proof or video of, of anybody defecating on the bed. I, I certainly do not have proof or, I mean, a video of anybody defecating in a bed. I'll, I'll give you that. That's a good thing. Yeah. Um, so, but what you, what you know is that Mr. Wallman didn't say anything about defecating in a bed. Correct. Right. So all of the bad publicity around that activity has nothing to do with Waldman, right? Uh, Waldman, as you said, didn't talk about defecation. Okay. And you haven't considered how that story has adversely impacted Miss Hurd's career. That story, you're going to ask me for a causational link between that poop story and her demise of her career. I can't. No, I'm not going to do that, nor can I. You couldn't do it? Can I make it? No, I can't. Right. And you can't do it with Waldman's statements either, can you? Well, again, I did, and I have, and I stand by them. So You, you did by just pointing out the time frame are relatively close. The time frame and the instigation and, and, if you will, the rallying of the forces. Again, it's like a lit tree. It's going to ignite everything. It's like free game afterwards. So it was the instigating event, if you will, I, you know, and that's what I looked at, yes. All right. So from your perspective, anything that happened after Waldman that was negative to your client is attributable to Waldman and therefore attributable to, to the damage analysis that you made. I was tasked with looking at that specifically, and that's what I was asked to limit it to. I was not asked to look at anything else. All right. Um, Jason Momoa, that's one of your comparables, right? 